Hi Shubham, welcome to the HR Elevate podcast. Hi Nishan, thank you so much for inviting me here. So Shubham, as you are in HR, give me an idea on how you jumped into the journey of HR. What was your foundational thought that brought you into the field of human resources? Uh, yes, uh, Nishant, first of all, uh, uh, well, the journey of HR was not that easy what I thought. Uh, after completing my uh, uh, graduation in BSc Biotechnology uh, from Goa University, uh, I had a plan of doing MBA, but I was not sure of which stream to choose in, like whether to go for HR or to go for marketing. So what I did is I made a thorough research on the concepts of marketing and the HR. And what are my strengths and the opportunities? Like, how can I utilize these skills? Like what I have. So I researched well about marketing and HR. So I got my interest more dwelled into HR. So then I started researching more on about HR concepts. I learned about labor laws. Then those curiosities and interest of knowing more about HR grew day by day. So then I started doing some certifications in HR. I pursued few certifications. Post that, simultaneously, I was planning for MBA as well. So I uh, answered my first MBA exam, but unfortunately, I could not clear it because uh, there were a few concepts which I was lacking in. So I thought, you know, for MBA, you need some skills, some skills which will definitely help you, you know, to learn better and better. So I thought of gaining some work experience rather than jumping straight to academics of MBA. So I got my first break in consultancy sector. It gave me a tremendous opportunity of working with different clients, like handling statutory compliances, conducting audits, uh, which is very important in the organization nowadays, if you see, and uh, handling inspections of labor laws, because there are a lot of queries which comes in manufacturing sectors. So the consultancy sector really taught me, you know, all this. And further, as year passed, I thought that, you know, labor law compliance is just a part of HR. HR is something beyond that. So I thought of exploring my opportunities into various sectors of HR. Like how do you recruit? How do you uh, handle compensation and benefits? So I shifted my career to hospitality sector. So what does this sector taught me now is it gave me a whole lot of exposure of entire verticals of HR, which I was not aware of. And most importantly, my managers, wherever I am working. So they taught me important skill, which is observing people and knowing them. So a lot of things, you know, gets clarified then and there only when you understand people around you and you solve things based on their needs. So this sector taught me all those things. So further, you know, I had a dream. I had a plan of doing MBA, but I kept it on hold. So further, I pushed my career to Hammers uh, uh, KSP Clubs. Uh, It was a startup initially. uh, And that startup, you know, all the skills which I learned in the past two to three years, it really helped to utilize these skills in the new startup environment. It helped me implementing new HR practices, policies, and I conducted various employment engagement activities also. And uh, based on my uh, achievements, I have been also rewarded as a star employee of the month for boosting employee morale and productivity. So then after gaining uh, experience, I got that confidence, you know, now I can really push my career to another level not in terms of uh, growing, in terms of learning. I always kept my vision clear that I had to grow and to in order to grow, I have to learn new skills. So I did my MBA. Uh, I started preparing again. Again, it was a tough challenge for me because shifting from work mode to again study mode, it's, it's very difficult. You need a practical approach, lesser and theoretical approach more because you need to focus you need to sit at one place and just focus on the studies. So it was a tough challenge for me. But uh, fortunately, I cleared uh, MBA exam and I got into School of Inspired Leadership. Uh, and uh, School of Inspired Leadership really taught me uh, how to build a time management skills, how to build uh, a various aspect. So what MBA does is it makes you think the entire angle. So after my hardships and all, I got into campus placement and currently I'm working in ozone pharmaceuticals as a business HR where it's just the initial phase of learning. Again, it's a challenge for me. Why? Because I'm shifting my environment from hospitality sector to manufacturing sector. 
so again it's a new environment it's a new learning so i'm knowing more aspects of business which i never came across in my hr journey so business hr makes you think the employee aspects the hr aspects as well as the business perspective well uh, that's the journey of hr it seems simplified but it had a lot of challenges uh, it, it had a lot of hard work mm, that's quite insightful so i'd like to know more about how you're working at ozone pharmaceuticals but before that you mentioned that you mm. received recognition and awards from your organization for your employee engagement and employee wellness uh, initiatives please tell me yes, more sir. about the initiatives that you took to benefit your employees yeah it was basically a hammers uh, night club it's a goa's first premium uh, club uh, where uh, it was my first startup uh, club which i was working for so basically when i started first in the organization i studied the existing policies and practices so as a hr we need to understand that what are the current situation of the organization is how it is behaving in terms of the employees and how we are uh, moving towards for- further so i really analyzed how the organizational pattern is i studied uh, employee behavioral patterns and uh, based on that i made my few research on that and what all activities i can do what all practices i can bring in so first i thought of implementing policies which are very employee friendly and which are beneficial for the organization as well so those policies really help organizational commitment employee commitment more towards the organization so those policies were like uh, giving more flexible benefits to them like uh, uh, and giving more incentive benefits as well and uh, engagement activities i would say i was uh, not having annual engagement activities i was keeping monthly engagement activities what i mean by monthly engagement activities is basically you have seen uh, many organizations uh, have this thing of having appraisals annually or half yearly but i believe every hr has to adopt some new styles of working towards uh, uh, their employees i used to maintain a weekly frequent touch points to know how they are moving their progresses what are the errors they are doing i was in line with continuous touch with employees so based on that we used to have circles employee circles i used to call that where we used to appreciate each and every talent who is to get a successful incentive who is to cross their per weekly targets so we used to reward those employees on weekly basis and those weekly basis we used to collect the data so as you know hr is all about data now it's moving more towards data driven so weekly then turned into monthly then turned into half yearly we used to gather this data and then we used to have this uh, uh, star awards half yearly star awards so we used to recognize each and every employees even not only high performing employees i would say even under performing employees the under, see we what we do is many organization they focus on only half, half performing uh, high performing organiz- employees but they don't focus on under performance so what we used to do is whoever under performing employees grow a bit also even they so show a significant growth of 10% 15% wish to give them a reward so that you know that becomes a motivational factor across so that was my only motive and then we had couple of outings as well uh, employee outing because you know it's important you have a, a good connection not only in terms of professional also in personal as well and second thing uh, i would like to mention is during post and pre covid post covid during covid phase it was very tough phase for the hospitality sector yes. so we had this unique thing going on employee morale was totally down and everyone was rushing to their families but uh, the only uh, faith was in hr at that particular time so i was the main point of contact during that particular of time so we had this unique uh, engagement sessions every day because uh, i know they were missing the families the only families are we the hrs and our line Very managers true. so we were the engagement we were conducting the engagement sessions and we were discussing day to day lives uh, how how is the situation over there because we could not come over the accommodation where we have provided them so is to connect them is to have training sessions as well so that they don't forget the skills which they learned so i was having this engagement session trainings boosting them and then we also provided a lot of benefits uh, during the covid phases like free medical checkups uh, every uh, every week to have a understanding on the employee health as well so all this you know turned out 
to be like uh, uh, during first and second phase of covid none of the employees have left the attrition rate was 0% oh uh. it was 0% and the total strength was somewhere around 100 none of the employees left so i would say that hr connection is very important and the way you sympathize the way you empathize with your employees is the main foundation where we built a stronger organization so that was a totally yeah that was totally a different environment actually it was total chaotic uh, we ourselves didn't know how to execute mean first thing because uh, first we had a discussion around uh, top leader discussion we had uh, we made a plan that uh, we won't let our employees panic first thing second thing we had also planned to do certain activities which will help them keep engaged third thing we had tied up with our hospitals uh, which can provide us the free medical checkup for the employees so that in case of any hyper hazard uh, things can be you know sorted very easily or uh, employees can be taken very well versed care of so all these initiatives really you know it worked out at the end of the day because we were planning things very carefully and we are having day on day discussions with each and every employees about the health status that you know that really helped uh, that made employee commitment towards organizational more stronger you know uh, when employees feel connected they feel connected at that level uh, then they believe that organization will be there at bad times and they will help us grow more in future yes sir so that were the things Hopefully which we planned and it has a lot of perceived value yes. and it impacts a person's productivity by a huge margin so shubham are you doing something similar at ozone for your employees uh no actually things are very different uh because again i said it's a new environment totally a different uh, working structure new organizational structure because uh, what we do in hospitality sector maybe the concepts maybe the uh, components what we are doing as a hr will be the same but the working style is always I think different i lost you again and yeah आवाज आ रही है सो या सो अब आ रही है ना हां अब आ रही है ओके सो या सी ओजोन एंड द मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड द हॉस्पिटैलिटी सेक्टर आर टोटली डिफरेंट सेक्टर्स द वे थिंग्स आर इन हॉस्पिटैलिटी सेक्टर आर डिफरेंट एंड द वे थिंग्स आर इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग आर डिफरेंट सो व्हाट वी डू इन इज ओजोन बेसिकली इज uh my role uh, uh, entails uh, i need to connect with uh, employees uh, who are underperforming and my role is to see the business aspects of the organization so currently i handle uh, uh, beauty division of the ozone uh, it's a luxury division so where i handle employee grievances employee performance management systems and i connect to them day to day basis i need to uh, have a lot of data driven decisions because as we move towards hr hr future is towards data driven and uh, what uh, this industry is teaching me is how to read data based on data how you would make decisions and based on data how you would rate which employees performing well which employees need uh, uh, more attention towards it's very minute details which i'm learning in ozone so that's really help, helping me and uh, many uh, innovative things i'm learning actually because there are many practices many benefits which we are giving to ozone employees so how do you initiate it because at sme level it's different at large level organization is different because there are a lot of hierarchies involved and how do you communicate how do you maintain those flow of communication matters a lot that's uh, the initial phase that's what i said i am in the initial phase of learning there are many more uh, to learn uh, and uh, more business aspects i have to learn so that's how it is right now okay this one was quite unexpected so what are your plans <laughs> up next then uh, are you planning some new initiatives once you know how the inner workings of your new organization are and then understand what the employees need or mm-hmm. like do you have something in plans right now uh see first of all whenever you join in a new organization you observe things so i my style of uh, working is i observe uh, observation period time is one month uh, plus the induction period takes 15 to 20 days but i take more longer days i take one month to understand the organization 
how things are what are the existing policies practices of the organization and uh, i uh, th- there are many orientation programs which are happening so i read it very c- carefully and thoroughly to understand how things are here so once i do that uh, i uh, understand what are the loopholes in the practices or what are loopholes in some initiatives i do that i analyze it it's my habit of doing it so i analyze what are the loopholes in each practices and what are things uh, which needs to be changed because as we are moving more towards adoption of technologies uh, to automate processes and to give instant uh, uh, result and to you know help operation move more smoother so i analyze all those things so based on that current my plans me and my team are working on revamping training initiatives so these training initiatives are basically includes a lot of visualization models of products basically what we are doing is we are having all employee connect to understand our products in just three usp points like what are our unique selling point of our products in a visualization models that is the first and second we have a real time business case scenario studies so me and my team are preparing a, a case study which has happened in the organization and we are doing those activities Uh, you know so that you know how they are making their decisions on these case studies so we are doing that as well and we are having couple of training modules uh, for all the employees uh, and uh, we are having uh, some certification courses as well which will uh, you know help them uh, grow better and better so these are currently in pipeline it's not been executed the only things which are executed are training initiatives of different modules and some visualization case studies so these two things are under pipeline for this and uh, second thing which we are doing is we are uh, having a very good uh, initiative in terms of employee wellness and flexible benefit programs for this so currently i am working under this projects and i hope so it gets executed as time proceeds that's that's really good to hear this is some yeah. interesting steps that you are taking for your employees i would say just the initial phase of the step because uh, as things proceed you never know what things you do innovative because uh, you know in layers there are sub layers as well so right now i said visualization models so True. what if we get ai tool what if we get chatbot in it uh, but the main thing is what skills are they observing in their training and how are they practically applying it on their real time job base that is very important so that's uh, that's our main goal actually it is yes so what our organization main motive is to engage employees in training activities and how this employees are learning what knowledge are they taking from this activities is very important and based on that knowledge and the skill which they are acquiring in training they are implementing on the real time job based so that's our main motive because at the end if you are training and there is no roi on that training so that's uh, that's that, that that does not give any sense of you know connection between having a training programs so our main training program motive is to have roi so that uh, to get a better understanding in terms of their day to day job role task you know these are some quite insightful and actively taken steps for your employees and yes. for your own career growth as well you know knowing where the industry is going and mm-hmm. working with the foresight of it that's really good to know shivam so what yes. what are your next steps after this uh, uh, are you looking to you know maybe deploy some specific uh, employee wellness measures or initiatives up next especially let's say for their mental health uh yes we are working towards it i am not saying we are 100% uh working towards it we are in pipeline uh so currently what uh, i am doing is we are having a survey okay we'll be having survey of uh, employees uh where we'll try to understand uh, their perspective uh try to understand uh, what are the benefits uh, which we can offer you so let's say we have survey form and uh, where the employees can rate what all what all benefits they are opting for and based on that benefits and based on the feedback outcomes we'll have a designed approach for this because uh, it's true that nowadays in many organizations they are approaching they are investing more towards employee wellness 
and uh, we are also equally contributing towards employee wellness because it's very important because i'm hearing a lot of issues about burnout and all so burnout is such issue which you know it uh, don't yeah, strike yeah, at yes. once yeah because burnout is such an issue it don't strike at once it happens day by day and then once it gets piled uh, it shows a very bad impact on employees performance so to mm-hmm. avoid True. those yes. uh, we are having this uh, we are having this collective survey wherein we are giving option for employees like what benefit uh, you know we can give to them so that they have a proper approach to this then we work on that and based on that we will design a wellness wellness benefit it will be most probably it will be based on healthcare will give a very good uh, healthcare benefits and also mental counseling and coaching counseling is very important to understand because we never know what's going in employees mind because there are a lot of things because uh, there are many financial responsibilities of employees which are going so which we don't know which uh, which you know uh, many sales employees they don't connect to hrs and things get just drop down then and there only so we need to have this uh, frequent touch points with employees to understand what are they going and based on their uh, needs we can you know have a counseling session so that they can you know open up a bit more and they are not hesitant to share their issues so that's what we are planning towards it now towards employee wellness that's the initial phase uh, uh, i am planning to pitch Uh, but there are many more things That's... as i said as things proceed you know there are a lot of things which we can do you can provide mental counseling support you can provide career counseling support to them with terms of personal and uh, professional development as well that's that's very interesting yeah. uh employee burnout and career counseling yes yes, career yes. Down, guidance so do you have any specific plans in mind or is this something that you will work on something uh maybe sometime in future few months down the line or maybe a year down the line or yeah, is it something that you're working on uh, you know strategizing and planning mm-hmm. right now no currently uh, there are projects which are given to us so we are working step by step towards it so the first uh, before you know understanding before directly working on employee wellness uh, we are working on training and initiatives and based on that training and initiatives employee gets more connected to you in that training program so based on the training and program it is straight away linked to employee wellness as well because at that particular time when you connect with your employees in training and program you get connected with them they share to you each and every details so how 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 is the job uh, role and how are the task uh, understanding to them so based on that uh, uh, we have a work uh, plan towards it will not work initially but a year down the line soon we'll start uh, you know having a designed approach for this i want to thank mindsmith and the team uh, for giving me this opportunity and uh, to share my experience uh, through this platform uh, so thank you so much for having me in here thank you nishant most welcome shivam it's uh, it was a good conversation and i'm really glad we had this conversation i learned quite a bit about how your organization is looking forward to work on burnouts and how you handled some uh, you know one of the biggest challenges yes the country and probably the world has seen uh, the covid uh, dealt with it with quite some insight and helped your employees yeah. felt at ease during that period uh, and how you are planning and approaching new initiatives at your new organization it was quite a lovely conversation thank you thank you nishant thank you so much